Under the shadow of Mount Meru in Tanzania, it's a typical day in the regional hospital of Arusha. That's the country's second largest city. The facilities, already basic, are at capacity. Doctors and nurses work tirelessly to treat diseases that are ravaging the population. AIDS kills off one in every ten people here. Imagine the number of orphans that that leaves behind, and imagine the psychological toll it takes on them. So it's really not a surprise that most of the people seeking help for mental health issues are young. Add in the fact that two-thirds of the Tanzanian population is young, under 25, and you begin to get an idea of the scope of the problem. We have very few psychiatric doctors in Tanzania, and none is even situated in Arusha, so you, you would imagine. The, the current situation we're facing. For this year, more than 10, the person committed suicide. For this year, from January to May. Florencia Simba is preparing for a very busy day at the mental health wing. She's at Arusha's regional hospital. It's small and it's always full. <laughs> These days, the hospital is seeing more young people come forward for help, and that's thanks to an innovative partnership between Canadian psychiatrist Dr. Stan Kucher and Farm Radio International. Mental health care in Sub-Saharan Africa is a substantive challenge. It's an area that has been quite neglected over time. It's an area where there is tremendous stigma. It's an area where the human resources that are needed to provide care that people need haven't been there. Access for young people to mental health care basically would be pretty well non-existent if you had depression or an anxiety disorder, something like that. There just wouldn't be the care for you. Together, Dr. Kucher and Farm Radio have trained hundreds of nurses, teachers and frontline workers across Tanzania and neighboring Malawi to diagnose and treat mental health problems in thousands of young people, often with counseling. But in a culture where doctors have traditionally treated health issues with medication, counseling is not always an easy sell. If you, you prolong counseling the patient, more than two weeks, some people disappear. Most of the patient, when you counsel without giving medicine, do you counsel without me giving medicine? Well, can you see I'm, I'm sick? And those who do require medication face their own set of problems. Though essential medications are free in Tanzania, the most effective antidepressants are not on that list. And that's likely because they cost a lot more. And the antidepressants that are free have a lot of side effects. Not only can they not afford it, take a look at these roads. A lot of times, people just can't get from their remote village to a pharmacy, a hospital, much less a counseling session. Buses don't travel here. And in a place where a tank of gas costs more than the average person makes in a month, cars are unattainable for most, certainly for those living in the countryside. Yeah, the people, when you write the medicine, but to the hospital we have no medicine out of stock. When you say the patient is going to buy outside, he or she can't afford. As a result, many people find it hard to stick with the treatment that they need. Yes. Florencia tells me about one of her patients, a woman who had tried to kill herself with poison after a fight with her husband. The woman received a few days of counseling and was asked to come back. I took, I took the number of her husband. Then I discharge the patient and make follow up for after one week. Before that, the patient committed suicide again. So poison died before coming to the hospital. And here, yeah, it's so cool. Doctors and nurses agree what their communities need is more mental health education for everyone. Surprising thing for me is most of uh, medical personnel. It's not, it doesn't know anything about depression. 
Dr. Omari Uvuguyu wants to change that. He is a psychiatrist with the Tanzanian government. He's using the Canadian Mental Health Training Program to teach frontline health workers how to diagnose and treat common mental health illnesses. But it is still challenging because we don't even have that capacity. We are using nurse counselors. We don't use psychotherapists. So even to counsel themselves, it is difficult. Dr. Uvuguyu credits a unique element of Farm Radio International's programming with changing the culture in his country. He says Farm Radio's hip-hop radio shows and radio dramas have surged in popularity and they're encouraging young people to acknowledge the value of counseling. If this program will expand to reach other regions as well, that will be much better. So people are aware, and if you become aware, then you will you want to seek help. But if you go to the hospital and there's no one to help you except medication, that will be very challenging. So we need to have more people added to it. The question now is whether Tanzania and Malawi will be able to sustain the momentum on their own. Government, I cannot fully say waiting or not waiting, but what I can say is that uh, uh, we're looking at scaling up. Michael Udetti is the Assistant Director of Clinical Services for Malawi's Ministry of Health. He says it all depends on what the government can afford, and that's not much. So what we want to, to make sure is that the, the, the program should be extended while we are putting our house in order and also making sure that um, those who are like in training schools, they should be learning issues to do with adolescent mental health, focusing on those areas, probably more than probably what has been happening before. Government support will be essential to sustain the impact that Dr. Kucher and Farm Radio International have had in this region. We are really encouraged that the Ministries of Health has shown a tremendous interest in this model. And we are hopeful that when we can demonstrate how good this really is and what kind of a positive impact this makes in the lives of people, that the Ministries of Health in both countries will move this ahead. Now, if we can link that success in reaching young people, making them aware of these issues, to having care available for them in their communities, we've done what we need to do. I would like to welcome Sister Peno to welcome our visitors. The stakes are high for a generation of young people with dreams of becoming doctors, nurses, journalists, politicians. But time is slipping by, and mental health issues are affecting another generation. And schoolyard dreams will need a helping hand if they're to come true.